Hi there, my name is Victoria Bowler, and today we are talking about some possible pathways to introducing harmony in elementary music. For our purposes here, let's get a little bit more specific about this word and how we're going to use it. Because a lot of the time when we talk about harmony, we mean uh, like two-part harmony or parallel harmony, the types of things that we might hear in pop music or that we might work on in an elementary choir setting. But there are actually some steps that we're going to want to take before we get to that level of harmony. So today let's talk about vocal part work and how we might approach layering in different vocal parts on top of each other. And that brings us to the second area where we're going to get a little bit more specific here. Today we are talking specifically about vocal harmony because there's another conversation we could have about instrumental part work in an elementary music setting. Okay, with that said, let's jump in. Before we get to harmony in fifth grade choir, we are actually going to work on a specific rhythmic skill all the way back in first grade or so. Rhythm versus beat is something that we talk about a lot, especially in the younger grades, and it's really important because all of the other harmonic work we do is going to come back to this ensemble skill of staying together. So rhythm versus beat. This is something like patting the steady beat while someone else claps the rhythm of the words. Uh, like if we were to take the rhyme B B bumblebee, uh, B B bumblebee stung a man upon his knee and all the rest of the time we are keeping a steady beat right here. So this difference between the steady beat and then the rhythm of the words, that's our first ensemble skill that we are working on. And if we wanted to tie this back to the game with the rhyme, notice that uh, if we were to play the game, the ball is being passed from person to person in a steady beat. So now to tie it back to the game, when you are out, you can pick up a pair of rhythm sticks and play the rhythm of the words. In upper grades, if this is a new skill for students, we're still going to work on it, but we can change the repertoire to make it work a little bit better with that age group. So something like uh, clapping and singing the words to best day of my life might sound like, I had a dream so big and loud, I jumped so high, I touched the clouds. Oh, 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 oh. Right. So we can do uh, the clapping and singing while the rest of the class is keeping a steady beat, dividing the class in half. Wherever students are starting, when we work on part work skills early on in the learning process, harmony later becomes a lot easier. An ostinato is a repeating musical pattern, and it can be rhythmic or melodic. We'll use both of those today, but we're going to start by working on rhythmic ostinati. So let's take the song, Apple Tree. We can sing and play the game, but then after a while, what do you think we should do with all of the apples that have fallen from the song? Well, we have lots of options here, but one of the options is we might decide to pick up all the apples. Pick up all the apples. So we can combine that ostinato with the song. Apple tree, um, all apple the tree. apples. Will pick your up apples fall on me? Apples, I won't cry and all I won't the shout. Apples, if your up apples all won't the be apples. Out. Let's also notice something important here, just like in the game for BB Bumblebee, where the beat was the ball being passed around the circle. In Apple Tree, our beat is in our feet as we are walking around the circle. So at this point, we have the uh, steady beat in the song. We also have the rhythm of the words that we are singing, and now we are adding a rhythmic ostinato. So already we have a lot of things going on right here. Here's one more example of a rhythmic ostinato, and this time we'll layer in several different ostinati together. I have done this arrangement at the very end of first grade. So let's take a rhyme like engine engine number nine and let's add some things on top. We are going to add clack, clack, clickety, clack, 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 clickety, clack. That's the first ostinato. Second ostinato is the bell on the train. Cling, clang, rest, rest, cling, clang. The clack, engine, clang, engine number nine, the train, going clang, down Chicago clang, line. Clang, clang, see it sparkle, clang, see it shine. Clang, engine, clang, engine clang, number clang, nine. So when we are first working on this skill of adding an ostinato to the song, rhythm versus beat work will definitely be really important. That will come first. But then even after that, we can absolutely expect this to be something of a challenge for students. A nice way to approach this is for the whole class to sing the song or the rhyme while the teacher speaks the ostinato. And then the teacher tags a few students to be on their ostinato team while the rest of the class is still singing the song. And then after that, we're gonna split the class in half. So we have the teacher versus the class, we have a small group versus a large group, and then half the class and half the class. 
And this does not need to happen all in one day, this sequence of uh, the teacher versus the class and then eventually dividing the class in half. That doesn't need to happen in one day. That's something that we can take in pieces over time. Another thing to point out here is that this is the sequence that we're going to use with other part work skills in the rest of this sequence that we'll talk about today. Another thing to point out here and something else that's going to apply to the rest of the skills we're talking about, we want to make sure that students can do the baseline task without our help before we add on part work steps. So with engine engine number nine, we want to make sure that we have observed the class speaking the rhyme all together without any assistance from us. And if we sense that students are kind of leaning on us, they're relying on us in order to perform the rhyme, then that's our cue that it's not time to move ahead to part work. And again, that's going to be true of the other skills here as well. Okay, now let's look at a melodic ostinato. This is where things can get really fun because our musical products here with a melodic ostinato, they can sound kind of like a choral arrangement when we're actually doing something very simple. And we can hang out here for a long time, in my opinion, because this is something that is musically satisfying enough to be like um, a standalone musical product. But in our teacher brain, we know that it's a very simple technique of just layering in melodic ostinati. So let's hang out here for a little bit uh, because this is one technique that is very versatile. This first example might happen somewhere around third grade-ish. This is Rocky Mountain. And for this melodic ostinato, we are just going to pull fragments from the song and repeat them over and over. A quick side note on this, if you are wanting to use this kind of approach, um, this is one of the reasons that the pentatone is so valuable from a pedagogy standpoint, because it allows for us to layer in things, different fragments of the song, much easier than if we were working with functional harmony. For this, we're going to hear the solo melody first, and then those layered ostinati come in. Rocky mountain, rocky mountain, rocky mountain high. When you're on that rocky mountain, hang your head and cry. Do, 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 do remember me. Do, 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 do remember me. Rocky mountain, rocky mountain, rocky mountain high. When you're on that rocky mountain, hang your head and cry. Do, 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 do remember me. Rocky This is also the same technique that we used in Alabama Gal, or in this arrangement of Alabama Gal. You can hear different ostinati start to get layered on top of each other, and those are pulled from the song itself. They're altered slightly, uh, but they come from the source material of the original folk song. last example for melodic ostinati. This is from the second grade end of the year review project inside the planning binder. And we are working on uh, layering in different shape ostinati on top of each other. This is something we'll talk about movement more in a bit, uh, but this is something where having movements to help us with our different part work skills is going to be really helpful. So let's take a quick listen to that. I can make a shape. You can make a shape. Everybody make a shape. Five, six, seven, eight. Slide, I can make a shape. Slide, you can make a shape. Slide, Everybody make a shape. Five, five six, seven, eight. Slide, I can make a shape. Slide, you can make a shape. Slide, Everybody slide, make a shape. Five, five, six, 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 seven, eight. Eight. practice, we're probably not going to jump into these layered ostinati right away. Melodic ostinati can be tricky for students. It's more of a challenge than rhythmic ostinati, but we can still follow that same breakdown of steps. So the one versus many and the small group versus the large group, and then eventually half the class and half the class. And again, just to reiterate, we don't need to go through this whole sequence of interdependent musicianship in one single lesson. This is something that we can spread out over time. 
So now we're moving in the direction of functional harmony. We can do a lot here with just tonic and dominant chords. So here's one example. This is Great Big House in New Orleans. And when we do this, again, talking about movement, we can help students out with a visual of short and tall houses, and this is gonna match the melodic contour. But we can also ask students to create short and tall houses with their bodies. Great big house in New Orleans, 40 stories high. Every room that I've been in, filled with pumpkin pie. Great big house in New Orleans, 40 stories high. Every room that I've been in, filled with pumpkin pie. All right, by this point, we have talked about rhythm versus beat. We have talked about rhythmic ostinati. We've talked about melodic ostinati, and we've talked about chord roots. This is a really substantial collection of part work skills to use already, right? There's a lot here. And musically, these can sound really cool, but in actuality, it's just a very simple set of techniques. And notice here that students are interacting with harmony, harmony um, from a texture or a part work perspective, earlier than sixth grade choir. And we're using it in an active and engaging way before we hand students a score and ask them to sit down and read notation. Um, another way to think about this, they have the chance to embody the skill before they are being asked to make sense of the skill on the page. Let's move on to partner songs. When we work with partner songs, we have one or more independent song ideas and they layer on top of each other. Here is an example of that. This is uh, Bow Wow Wow with Weevily Wheat and Tidio. Just one window tidy, oh, just two windows tidy, take three windows tidy, oh, look at the window tidy, tidy, oh, tidy, oh, look at the window tidy, tidy, oh, tidy, oh, look at the window tidy. We might also use shorter fragment songs, so here's an example of that. This is Frog in the Meadow. Frog in the meadow can't get him out. Take a little stick and stir him about. Frog in the meadow can't get him out. Take a little stick and stir him about. This is another place where adding movements can be really helpful. So for this lower part, up down up down all around that might be students jumping up and down coordinated jumps high and low to show that melodic contour and then that second part or rather that higher part where we are searching for the frog where is that frog students can come up with movements in a small group that show them searching for the frog and maybe they're following the melodic contour with their binoculars or something like that when we are using these movements Having that movement piece really helps us stay together as an ensemble and not get lost with all of the other melodic things happening around us. And that's because there is more than one musical medium happening here, not just singing. So we, can, um, we have other touch points to use here. We have the connection of listening as we listen to our group sing. We have this visual connection as we see everyone move and we can see them sing. And then we have this kinesthetic connection as we hop up and down to show where we are in the song. In a round, we have one group that sings the melody and then another group sings that same melody a few beats later. Your students might have already done this on their own with something like Row, Row, Row Your Boat. When it's time to sequence singing in a round, we can definitely use the approach that we've used with the other skills here. So the teacher versus the class, and then a small group versus a large group, and then half the class versus half the class. But before we get to the teacher versus the class, once again, we are going to want to make sure that students can sing the song. And uh, let's put on our, our fire robin hats here. They can sing it tunefully, beatfully, and artfully by themselves as a class without our help. And again, if we sense that students are relying on us to sing the melody, then it's not time to move on. One nice way, when it's time to divide the class up, one nice way to facilitate this process is to have the whole class sing the song in unison while they're walking around in the circle. And this is the time for us to stand back and watch everyone's feet to make sure that we're all walking with the same steady beat and that students can sing the song without our help. And then, so we have students in a circle, then we will slice the pizza. We just take our hands, our giant pizza slicers, and whoosh, whoosh, this group makes their own circle, and then whoosh, whoosh, this group makes their own circle. So now we have two separate circles that we have divided with our pizza slicer from the one giant unison circle. 
and then this circle comes in first, this circle comes in second, and the teacher, we are standing in the middle. This is a nice way to approach part singing because we can hear each other in our own part circle. But then notice that as we get closer to the other group, it's going to get a little bit more challenging. And as we get further away, it's a little bit easier. So changing the proximity of the groups is a nice way to add a level of challenge and a level of support. So now we are talking about two-part harmony and parallel harmony. This is a natural next step out of this progression of uh, layered vocal textures. But notice that by the time we get to fourth and fifth and sixth grade, wherever we have our, like our elementary choir scenario, we've already had all of this practice with harmony and part work and layered vocal textures. And each step along the way, we are inviting students to make music in community in a way that is uh, interesting and supportive and challenging. And this is always the goal, right? We're always trying to learn from students what their level of challenge should be and what level of support we need to provide. Today we've talked about this big picture sequence of part work skills from rhythm versus beat to two part harmony. But we've also talked about how to sequence each scaffold, each step within the specific part work skill. Before we wrap up here, I want to mention this book. If you are interested in diving in more in the part work sequence, this is called One Accord, uh, Developing Part Singing Skills in School-Aged Musicians. This is a very robust sequence of uh, rhythmic and melodic part work skills that I definitely recommend if this is a subject that you want to uh, dive into a little bit deeper. Okay, if you have a question or a comment about part singing in elementary music. I would love to hear from you. You can find me on Instagram. I am at Victoria Bowler. You can drop a comment below or you can shoot me an email, victoria at victoriabowler.com. Thank you so much for watching and happy teaching.